Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm so happy that you've dropped by to join me for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV, where we learn how to put our dreams into action. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Joining me in the studio is Caitlin Raguer, expert in the history of women's sexuality, a burlesque performer and film producer. Well, Caitlin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for it, having me. Now, you're doing your PhD in the history of women's sexuality. That's right. Uh, that sounds really intriguing. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why that? Um, I, I've always been really interested in women's relationships to their bodies. Mm -hmm. I've been interested in the history of beauty. Uh, it's it's really a fluid concept. The ever changing, you know, ideals in terms of beauty has always been a great interest to me. So it just made sense to to kind of continue along. I think when you host a TV show or when you're an expert on television, um, you're automatically an expert. And I thought I should become an expert for real. <laughs> yeah, you managed to blend your your academics mm. with um, with performing yeah. in the arts as a burlesque dancer mm -hmm. and expert. So how did you how did you sort of combine those two? I feel really privileged to have been able to find a career path that could fuse those two things. I don't I don't feel like it happens enough. I think that you know, there's so much amazing work being done in academia that often doesn't make it into the mainstream, and vice versa. I think that, 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 that there's some amazing work being done in the arts that actually would really heighten academia if they came together, and actually would, the, the two are so mutually beneficial. So the, the fact that I've been able to fuse both of them and bring these two worlds together, I, I feel incredibly privileged. Now, so tell me, uh, in terms of being a burlesque expert, I mean, how did you get your start in burlesque dance? I mean, why burlesque dance, and why not any other sort of form, dance form? When you look at burlesque, you're really looking at this venue in which women were working when a lot of women weren't working. You have really, I, I think they're the original feminists. I think they are the you know original career women, even though some people would disagree with me with that. Um, so I, I was always really interested in, in burlesque artists as performers. But then also, because I've had the opportunity to then make burlesque workshops for women who aren't burlesque dancers, for, for women who are all shapes and sizes, burlesque has become an amazingly powerful tool in which we can explore you know, a variety of body types. I, I, I get to I have the best job. I get to have women look at themselves in the mirror, reevaluate how they them see themselves, and learn to move for their body type. Now you're making, uh, you've made a film uh, yes. about uh, a very well-known, famous burlesque yes. dancer. So what's your film about? So Tempest Storm uh, was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, most famous anyway, burlesque queens from the 1950s. She had many famous boyfriends. Um, and and JFK, she, and JFK, Elvis Presley, Elvis, yeah. Louis Armstrong, oh, wow. Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, good for her. Mickey Rooney. <laughs> pretty much name any icon from that period, and and she's known him. Um, but she, like, I just when I met her, and I've been working with Tempest for a while, I just completely fell in love with her, and was really captivated by her strength. This is a girl who grew up in Georgia, was married off at the age of 14, ran away, and used burlesque as a, as a means of making a life for herself. You know, she always said, I was a businesswoman. And I, and I love that idea. I think that that's really someone who's, who's working with what you got. And, and that's key for, for so many people. But I mean, yeah. she's 80, she's 84, 80 in yeah. her 80s. Yeah, yeah 84. Uh, and what was it like for you to meet her? Uh, I, was, I was really excited to meet her. I've been studying, I had been studying her for a long time. And so when I first met her, I was, you know, like completely starstruck and like giddy. And, and then we sat down and we had a really 
long talk together, and I was I was really touched with um, with how open she was with me about what she had been through in her life, you know, um, the different experiences she had had, and. And then I found out that she had never had a film made about her life. She had never had her story told in a really cohesive way. And I thought, my God, like, I need to, I need to make this happen. Because, you know, when you're working with history of any kind, the idea that you can actually speak to someone who was there and who lived that history is just an invaluable source. Uh, what are you hoping that people will take away when they see the film? Uh, a few things. I think one thing that... I really love about Tempest is that she defies a lot of preconceptions we have about what it means to be an aging f woman. So she has no problem with still putting on her outfits from her glory days. So in terms of how women perceive their bodies mm. um, and you studying sort of the history of um, women's se sexuality, mm. do we perceive our bodies differently today than we did have historically? I believe that every woman has a time period that their body was the ideal. I use that a lot. I think that that you know it's it's an it's an ever shifting it's an ever shifting spectrum. And if you happen to be in the time in which your body type is the ideal, like good for you. If you don't, that that, that there's a lot of women that can feel disenchanted by that. That can feel that can develop low self esteem from that. Um, and I think that's silly because I don't, I don't see why we can't, you know, just embrace whatever time period we were and dress, and dress appropriately, move appropriately. Um, do I think that women, I think that women always have been preoccupied with beauty. I think that we're always, you know, we're always very concerned about how people perceive us sexually. Um, but one of the great things and we're very lucky about today is that we do, careers are our birth right now. You know, the Women's Live gave us that and that's very fortunate. So at the same time, there's also, we, we also hopefully have other things going on so we can kind of balance that out. So I know that you, now you produced a, a calendar uh, mm -hmm. in support of raising funds for breast cancer yeah. research. Yeah. Yeah, so we did that with um, the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation, uh, myself and my partner Jordan Balaban, and the, we sold it through Safeway stores. And the great thing about this project was that all of our pinup girls were women who had, were either living with or who had survived breast cancer. Um, some of them had undergone double mastectomies, uh, some of them chose uh, to have reconstruction, re reconstruction, some did not. And what we did was we worked with Fashion Crimes in Toronto to build costumes, to build pinup costumes that would work for whatever, whatever, uh, whatever part of the process they were in in terms of their recovery. And we did this pinup calendar that was all about embracing their bodies and enjoying their bodies. What's next for you? What's next for you? Well, me, I'm um, working on a book right now to publish, to, to publish that in the book. We're hoping to release the film to, um, to have a, a festival release by the end of 2014. And I might be working on a new TV show, but I'll let you know. <laughs> and now it's time for a good to know minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. Obviously confidence, but it's, that is easier said than done. I think that so much of it, and, and with the work I do, is about feeling grounded in your body, feeling comfortable with your body. Often I tell women to look at themselves in the mirror and just move and dance and figure out how their body works and be yourself really comfortable in your own skin, quite literally. And as soon as you start feeling grounded in your own body and kind of in your own identity subsequently, I think that a huge amount of confidence comes from that. And that's good to know. <laughs> Thanks for that. Well, Caitlin, uh, I've enjoyed uh, hearing your story. Thank you for being here today and sharing you. your story. And uh, I wish you all the best with, uh, with finishing your PhD and, um, and with your film and all that you do. Thank you so much. Well, for more information about Extraordinary Women TV, my guests, and to watch past episodes, I invite you to visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. And I'd love to stay in touch with you 
Join me on Twitter for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, we can connect at Extraordinary Women TV. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.